Right. One, two, three. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Lee Harding, and we're going to talk recruiter enablement. Lee, thanks for taking the time to join me and give us a quick introduction. Uh, who are you and what do you do? Cheers, Adam. Yeah, my name's Lee. Um, I've been in recruitment and talent acquisition for the best part of 20 years. Uh, did agency side, did uh, in-house, internal, um, led recruitment teams, and now I am at uh, Joint Talent doing the embedded TA and um, RPO. So, yeah, all, all three stints. Yeah, great. OK, so uh, you've got every angle on this subject. So let's talk about it. What's recruiter enablement to you? So I, I am really fortunate in that I have the uh, the words recruiter enablement in my job title. So I've been doing it for for, for, for for a little while now. And I think for me, recruiter enablement probably broken down into into three main things. Um, the first one is the tools and the processes. Um, to enable recruiters to do the to do their jobs best, you know what can we automate? What should we automate um, to make candidate experience, hiring manager experience, but also more important, you know, is equally importantly, recruiter experience as good as it can be. Um, the second thing is data and intelligence. Um, you know, what insights can we provide to the recruiters, to the hiring managers, to the whole hiring community? Is it competitor analysis? Is it, is it benchmarking? Uh, looking at data to refine and improve the process as well, and look at all of the you know the bottlenecks in the in the funnel. And then the the third one is probably the one that's overlooked the most is more of the the L and D angle. So I see it a lot as being a TA coach, not just to the recruiters, um, but to to the TA leadership team and the, and the hiring managers as well. You know we. You know, unlike, you know, HR, where you've got CIPD or procurement or finance or all these other professions where there are, you know, proper accreditations whereby this is what you do in this situation and this is how you do that. It's not really any of that in, in, in TA or recruitment. And your your knowledge and your experience of a rec as a recruiter will depend on where you've worked and how you've been taught in that, in that particular workplace. If you come from agency, you know, a lot of it will be probably more sales focused and how to to win new business. And you know, I remember from my agency days, you have the hard clothes on the canvas, try and get it over the line, and you know, working out how much fuel somebody's going to save uh, by taking this job over that job. You know, yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. that was that was the training that you that you got. And then when you when you move in house, very very limited, you know, dedicated recruiter training. You know, yeah. you would probably have to. Um, either look at, you know, if you have a budget, which is, you know, unlikely in a lot of TA teams, it's not spare budget, you know, to get an external supplier to come in and do some training. Yep. Um, or you just signed up to all of the L&D that everybody else in the company, you know, confident presenter, classic example, we've all done them. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it's it's the training, it's the development to enable recruiters to figure things out for themselves rather than, you know, here's a, here's a library of, Boolean strings, or here's a library of job job ad templates, or here's a library of this or a library of that. It's more the showing them how to do that. And you know, so one of the things we, we do at JT is we we were very, very aware of this that everyone's background is different. Um so we came up with the the, the JT certified series and it covers all you know levels, if you will, of, of TA from sourcer right up to you know ta director type level we know we cover all of the facets from from sourcing personal brand you know taking a brief from a hiring manager you know the stuff that you would take as basic stuff that you would assume everybody knows but again it depends on where you've where you've learned your trade and um, to make sure that everyone has got the exact same foundational knowledge and core competencies so they can they can solve problems themselves they know how to take a really good brief, which will then inform a really good job advert or a template, but they've also given them the copywriting capability to be able to write those themselves, um, to then, you know, sitting down and solving problems. And, you know, using the Boolean example, you know, yes, I could go and write a million different Boolean strings, because I've got a load of them from, from that built up over the years and saved up in good old notepad, um, or, I can create some videos that says, well, this is how I would build a search for this type of role. 
but talk through how I've done it and why I've done it that particular way yeah. so they can apply the learnings themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I think that's really important. So when you started, um, th this is part of your role, right? It's not your, it's not your full role. It's part of your role. But when you yeah. started um, taking over the area of recruiter enablement, what were the what were the quick wins or what were the like what were the what, what would you encourage a talent acquisition team who is uh, looking at this for the first time? What's the what's the what's the first things to understand? And, and yeah, if there's any quick wins, what would they be? Um, don't neglect the basics. I I, yeah. I honestly think. Oh, you know, I've done it in the past. And I've been guilty of it as well. Is we 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 tend to overcomplicate and over engineer. Um, the whole recruitment process, the the taking a brief from a hiring manager, that would reach out to candidates. If you if you nail the basics, the the rest of it should be pretty straightforward. But you get the basics wrong, it doesn't matter what you do further down the line. Yeah, it's not going to be right, and you're going to yeah get problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, one other like question that's occurred to me about this is. Given the way that your teams are all representing lots of different organizations, you want your customers to have a consistent experience, I think, the JT experience. Um, but the candidates are not represent the, the recruiters are not representing JT to candidates, they're representing the brand that they are working with at that time. Yeah. What 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 complexities does that add into it from like for your job? Yeah, I mean, it's good. Good question. I mean, it's it, it it's interesting, and this is why I'm a big believer in in the training and the L and D because people can be adaptable. Because you're right, you know, you could have, you know, say for example, Adam, you are currently working with a client who's you know pre IPO, they've only about 250 heads. You are the sole focus of 38 team. Yeah. And then your next project, you're going into a global enterprise business. And you need to, you know, you need to be adaptable because the processes will be different. Um, so it's because you're right. We do we do need consistency, but we also need a lot of adaptability as well. Yeah. Which is why you know it's it's a growth mindset, the creating the curiosity, the <clears throat> understanding why things are done in a certain way, so that you yeah. can adapt. And then yeah. you can make recommendations. And, you know, one of the things we do as well is, you know, the whole JT certified, you know, training series. A lot of our clients are now asking for that as well. So we'll go in and we'll do sessions with, with their teams and we will cover off, you know, everything that our recruiters uh, have gone through as well. Mm. Great. Lee, we've taken up lots of your time here getting some great information. And I know that there's loads more that we could go into, but... Um, in the spirit of keeping these bite sized, I'd like to invite you back on in a few weeks or so and we can talk about it a bit more detail. But for now, thank you very much for your time and uh, it's been great to hear from you. Sounds good. Cheers, Adam.